Julian is already um, coming and ready. Oh, um, yeah, cool. Um, well, he mm -hmm. likes spectacular outfits too, but today he's a little bit boring, I have to say. Lake Gada, Lake Gada. Yeah, you got different ones. Napoli. But is, got, are uh, these covers or covers of a magazine or what's this? They're like posters. Yeah, they all holiday posters in the 50s. Ah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So Julian, thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, the first, le let me take you back to your time as a player because we, we get to know a lot about how you coach and we've seen your teams. Were you a good player? Uh, I would say I was a talented player uh, for being a good player. Uh, I have to play professional soccer and I uh, did not play professional soccer, but I was a talented player and it, it could be uh, imagined that uh, I could be a professional player as well, but I have a lot of injuries in the youth and it was not that easy, but uh, I was talented, perhaps not that talented uh, like a manager, but I was talented. So if you had made it as a professional, which I imagine you have, you had, you have dreamed of even after injuries stop you. If you had made it as a professional player, it will be the player that you will want to have in your squad, even if he wasn't a starter or not. Would you would you go for him? That's a good, good, interesting question. Um, I never thought about this, but um, at the end, uh, the ideas um, of being a manager and uh, ideas about my philosophy um, um, developed uh, also in the time when I were a player as well. Uh, I have managers like Thomas Toho and. Uh, um, when I was a player uh, for Thomas or for other guys, for other managers, um, there are always topics um, you say, yeah, that's good what he uh, educate us and uh, I want to wanna do this and there are always be part, uh, there were parts of uh, the managers um, when I think about it, it's not that good, uh, but at the end perhaps um, I always want to win as a player as well, and I always want to win as a manager. So um, I could be a player for the manager, Julian Nagelsmann. <laughs> right, so he had the right mentality, that player, it, seem, it seems like. But as you said, injuries stop you becoming a, a professional. Are you mad at football because he didn't let you uh, be a player? Is that something that drives you still or not? The first, the first uh, Two months after I make the decision that my career as a player will stop, uh, were very hard. Uh, I don't want to uh, be a manager or want to be a player as well. I just want to do uh, different things in my life. Um, I don't want to stay on the pitch again, but after two or three months, um, I, I go out back on the pitch. I have the chance to be assistant manager in, in 1860 Munich, and uh, it was a, a great decision at all, and I'm happy about it. And uh, uh, but the first two two months after I made the decision to stop my career was not that easy and uh, I get mad of, of soccer. I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to be a manager and uh, I want to do different things in my life. Do you were what? About 20, something like that? I think 19, yeah, 19. 19. So you are a player. You, you give yourself two months off just to think what to do. Uh, uh, and then you become a, a coach, a manager soon as well when you become 28 um have you had childhood have you been a teenager have you let allow yourself to be to be a child uh, because it seems like you've been always mature in your decisions yeah when you when you want to become a professional player you have to sacrifice a lot in the youth and um and now i'm a young manager as well and sometimes there are parts of my life when i allow me to be a child i think it's important uh, that you're kind of sometimes kind of weird in, t in your brain. I think that's that's good. Uh, you have to be a, a child some sometimes. I think that's important. Uh, all the guys, it's always imp also important when you want to uh, educate and develop your players. Uh, they could recognize that you're kind of crazy sometimes and, and you enjoy your life. You love your life. You love your job. You love to do. You love the, that what you do on the pitch. And uh, if the players recognize that sometimes you're crazy or you're, you're kind of a child and uh, you want to play or play soccer as well. I sometimes I play soccer uh, on the pitch, um, although I'm a manager. But uh, when the players recognize this, then they there, there will always be a good relationship to them and uh, they know that uh, I'm not only the guy who tell them uh, my ideas and to tell them uh, they have to went in this direction or in this direction. They always uh, recognize that I could be um, kind of a, of a crazy child as well and uh, that's important. I'm trying to imagine you as, 
as a crazy child. What does that look like? What does that look uh, like? I, I'm easy for parents. So I'm easy for parents. <laughs> so you like to uh, joke and uh, well, you're after all the same, more or less the same age as some of the some of you players. Is that a, a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, it, it, it's. I think it's an advantage of my of my age. Um, if you're uh, nearly the same age like your players, and uh, you could imagine what the trigger points of your players, you could imagine uh, what are the, the most important topics uh, on the off pitch for my players. It could be a big uh, advantage. Uh, that's that's true. You're the kind of manager that, uh, like many others, uh, I'm thinking of uh, of Pochettino, for instance, who think that it's key to get into the head of the players, uh, to get to know them, to get to get the best out of them. Uh, how much you dedicate to that, and how you how do you get into their their heads? Yeah, when I get a new player, then we make tests about his character and about his personality because it's uh, I think it's very important to find out and figure out his trigger points and. Uh, the, the things he uh, loved to do uh, on the pitch, but also off the pitch. I think that's very important. Um, I always tell uh, my, my players that it's important to have a good relationship. So it's, um, um, it's important to have meetings face to face to talk about different things. Also, when the, the players have uh, something in their mind, uh, they, could, they have to come to my office and then we talk face to face. It's important a big, uh, good, to have a good relationship to your players. It's, important for a good education. Um, if you love to go to the uh, training center, if you love to go on the pitch, then you will uh, develop in the right direction. And if you do not love to go to the, uh, on the pitch or on the, on the training center, then it could be more complicated. So the relationship is very important to go uh, to come into the brains of the players is very important. And if the players like you or love you uh, and, and the other way around as well, then um, yeah, you will be successful. So deep down, you want to get into the heads, so they get play. They play better for you. That's that's basically what he, or is there more? You want them to enjoy what they're doing too. It's a, the relationship is important, and if you are into when you get into their brains, and then uh, there sometimes there are very fatigued moments uh, in the game or in the season, and uh, if they if you are in in their in their heads and in their in their brains then uh, sometimes they run more and more and they could do more steps and uh, sometimes they're tired and they, perhaps they imagine oh I cannot do more now and um, I'm I'm tired I just want to be substitute or go on the bench uh, but if they know yeah, the manager on the sideline um, like me and I like him then I will do a bit more I try to do more I, I run more steps and um, yeah, I try to to the players imagine I, they play for them, but uh, they also play and try to perform for me on the sideline, and that's uh, this relationship is very important. It sounds like you, you want your players not to th not to think that they're going to work, that they're going to enjoy themselves, and you create that kind of atmosphere. Uh, Pochettino told me once that he hated the fact that when they because he's got cameras everywhere, right? So he sees them coming out of training. And he sees them smiling coming out of training. Very serious getting into training, coming and smiling, coming. Why are you smiling? You should be actually smiling when you go into training, because that's that's what part of what you should do to improve. You should enjoy that. Do you notice those kind of things as well? Yeah, I think it's always important that uh, the players know that soccer is still a game, and they they have to. It's not about work. Uh, sometimes you have to work. It's normal. Sometimes you have to do things. Uh, you do not like that much, but at the end, uh, it's still a game, and you have to play it. And um, uh, I always tell my teammates when they go on the pitch and they do not smile, they should remember uh, why they went on the pitch the first time as a child. They want to play. They want to play, and they want to have a competition, but uh, they still want to play. You know, in professional soccer, it's about uh, winning games. That's normal, but uh, when you go um, on the pitch the first time in your life. You want to win as well. Uh, I never uh, met a, uh, a small child who want to go on the pitch and say, oh, it's no problem for me to lose today. Uh, the first time when you go on the pitch, you want to win, and but you want to play. And uh, sometimes it's about working, uh, especially when uh, a season is very long and you have a lot of games, then there will be parts uh, in the game when it's more like working and not like playing, or if, if there will be a period of time when you lose many, many games or um, uh, you lose uh, a very important game, then it feels like more like working, not playing. But at the end, when they go on the pitch and they go off the pitch, it's also important. Not only uh, when you when you watch in their face when they go on the pitch, it's also important when they um, went into the dressing room after the training session. They have to smile, and that's very important because then they they will develop in the right direction. It's still a game, and uh, a game you have to play, and not not uh, you have to work. 
it's very well known that Thomas Tuchel was part of uh, your decision making to become a, a coach and you were working with him earlier on. Uh, was he the guy that opened the doors for you or more? Did, he, did you learn things that you still carry with you from Thomas Tuchel? No, I liked him as a manager very much. I think the training sessions were very interesting, uh, were very hard for, for the head. It was not only, um, not only play a pass uh, to another guy and then uh, it's over. It's always, were always very difficult and uh, very exhausting for the brain, but was interesting and uh, developed uh, as, a, as a player when he was uh, my manager. And um, I created ideas uh, for being manager on my own. And uh, when I get injured in Augsburg, uh, when he was a manager, he told me that um, he could imagine that I could be a good manager in the future as well. And uh, so he opened the door. But at the end, there were other guys like Ernst Tanner or Alexander Schmidt in 1860 Munich who were more important for my career because they gave me the first job. Uh, I think that's, that's more door opening than uh, just imagine that I could be a good manager. But um, the first step, I think, was, was Thomas and uh, the, the bigger second or third step uh, were Ernst Tanner and uh, Alexander Schmidt in 1860 Munich. I last saw you in a, in a PSG, in the PSG um, uh, Leipzig game. And I, I was looking at it, I was thinking, oh yeah, it's like a club team. And then he's like, no, 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 it's like a Guardiola team. Then I realized at the end it was an Nagelsmann team, quite clearly. <laughs> but, uh, but those two are influences in the way you're thinking, no? Yeah, for me as a manager, um, when, I, when I have to talk about my philosophy, um, I try to educate my players in all phases of the game. Uh, so there will be parts like, um, uh, the counter-pressing uh, moments of uh, Liverpool, there will be parts of ball possession, mo ball possession moments uh, like Man City or Barcelona uh, or Bayern Munich when uh, Pep was the manager of Bayern. So um, I think it's important that uh, the players get ideas in every phase of the game, in uh, attacking moments and in, in, in pressing and counter-pressing and counter movements and ball possession moments because there are different opponents and, and uh, every opponent uh, ha, uh, has different strengths and weaknesses and uh, you have to adapt a little bit um, and you have to focus. Sometimes there are games you have to focus more on counter pressing or more on, more on ball possession. But uh, at the end, overall, when you watch 90 minutes, you always have nearly every phase of the game. Um, not not the same time, not uh, not always, uh, don't know, 30 minutes. Uh, attacking and uh, 30 minutes uh, pressing and 30 minutes uh, ball possession, but uh, you have every phase and overall the 90 minutes. So you have to educate your players in every phase. And yeah, sometimes we focus in the training sessions a bit more on possession. Sometimes we focus a bit more on pressing, but overall they have to, they have to be a good player in all phase and have to get good ideas in all phase. And that's, uh, that's the most important topic for me. You are exceptional at what you do, but you're not born out of a vacuum out of zero. You were in a culture that that uh, accepted defeat and humbly decided that you had to change. So education became crucial. Uh, must have been an exciting thing to be part of of that. The sense that that you were, or oh, I don't know if you felt it, that you were part of the change that was happening in German football. Yeah, I think uh, I was the first young guy who um, were the manager in, in the Bundesliga with uh, 28. So I opened a door for for young uh, managing talents in, in Germany. There are many in Germany. There are many young uh, managers as well. And uh, I think the the, the soccer in, in the Bundesliga developed in the last years. So when the first season when I was manager in Hoffenheim, nearly every opponent play 4-2-3-1 uh, midfield pressing was nearly every game the same and now it's very difficult to analyze the opponents in the Bundesliga as well, not only in the Champions League. There are many teams who make different, uh, who play different formations, who have uh, different attacking modes. Uh, sometimes they press very high uh, when they play uh, against a special opponent. Then the next game when they play against us, they defend very deep and only play counter attacks. So the, I think um, yeah, in my period uh, as a manager in the Bundesliga, there were a lot of changes in the way of playing soccer in the Bundesliga and uh, I think it will be in the future the same way. I, I read that you said that uh, obviously you are ambitious and you'll try to get as far as you can in, in your career. Uh, am I wrong? <laughs> you <No>. sound ambitious. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I thought you were. But I, I read, I haven't heard you, but I read that uh, at some point Madrid approached you and you thought it's not the right time. So two things. One, are you calculating? 
how your career goes and is it true that uh, Real Madrid approach you? I, I tried to calculate and that's not that easy in soccer because um, it's um, always a process and uh, you could not imagine what happened the next season or in the next year so it's not that easy but it's uh, it's important to have a kind of a plan uh, if this plan will become uh, the reality um, it's not sure but at the end I think to have a plan is very important to have a kind of structure uh, in your career plan it's important to do the, the right steps when you are manager in Hoffenheim then the next step uh, RB Leipzig and then you try to plan what could be the next step as well and when it's the right uh, point to do the next step uh, you try to plan it but it's not that easy to plan in, in professional soccer um, yes it's true we have a, a phone call with um, Jose Angel um, of Real Madrid uh, I was not the only one uh, I think he uh, get uh, get in touch with um, there are many many uh, managers and he he wanted to talk to me um, want to get to know me and uh, know about and learn about my philosophy and uh, about my ideas of playing soccer but uh, I, I think I made the right the uh, right decision it was not that easy because Real Madrid is one of the biggest clubs in Europe and uh, if they call me in the future, uh, perhaps the decision would be in <laughs> the different, a different way. But uh, I think in, uh, two years ago, it was the right decision because I have no time for preparation. I have no time to learn the language. And um, I did not have the great experience in, in uh, international games. Um, I only won one international game when I were manager in Hoffenheim. And then, uh, to, then to be the next manager for Real Madrid, I think it um, was not the right the right next step so um, it was not um, the, the right step in, in my plans and uh, I think uh, the step to go to Abel Leipzig were, were better for my career and better for my uh, developing uh, as a manager at the end it was not that easy but uh, I think it was the right one ¿Hablas español ya o estamos estudiando español o no? <laughs> Hola, ¿qué tal? That's all Hola, ¿qué tal? Gracias uh, E2, was kind of, uh, uh, not that not that many words. For the press conference, you need one or two more words. <laughs> you you yeah. just have to two more, two more words would be good, yeah. Two more words would be good. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's the Champions League and it's, uh, it's Liverpool. Um, as you can see, and as you noticed, uh, fashion is something I'm very worried about uh, and interested about. And I hear that it's the Champions League where you, uh, where you decide to wear sometimes different jackets. Or, have you prepared one for Liverpool yet or not? Yeah, but it's not, not that cool like your jersey. Uh, it's not that cool. I, uh, I think it's uh, not that interesting because the, the last game uh, when we play against a team of uh, the Premier League, Manchester United, I were, I think, kind of a good, kind of cool stuff, but uh, we lose, and uh, now it will be not that I, interesting. I, I, I thought you were going to say that they bully you because I'm, their reaction because you were wearing a jacket that's different. Come on, <laughs> S slow and down. I think, I think it was a cool jacket, but at the end, uh, we, if we win the game, uh, everybody uh, tell about uh, how cool this jacket is, but uh, we lose it, so it was not that cool. That have you burned that jacket? Is that ever going to be used again? Um, perhaps not uh, on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't know a lot about you personally, and, and I've introduced the, uh, the fashion side because I wanted to ask you something else. See if you help me with this kind of link that I want to make between the football that you practice, brave, uh, quick, fast, uh, a lot of movement, with you liking motorbikes and making fast trips with, you, with your motorbikes. Is there a link? Uh, I think in general my my um, my hobbies are um, linked to the way I want to play soccer. Perhaps uh, I like to uh, I like to do different action things like kite surfing, mountain biking, snowboarding, uh, free riding with snowboard or with uh, with skis. Uh, so I like these uh, action sports uh, in my free time, and uh, I like to do these action sports in my free time and. This could be a big link to the way I want to play soccer. It's always about uh, offensive uh, parts, always about action, always about try to create chances and score many goals and uh, try to give the fans in the stadium an emotional uh, time when they are in the stadium and they watch our games. Uh, yeah, Perhaps there are a link between my hobbies and uh, the way I want to play soccer. I get it. You are very mature when you are in front of the public, in front of your players, apart from that, those moments where you are a crazy child. But uh, in your free time, you are a teenager. You've got the hobbies of teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous stuff you're doing there. But uh, 
going back to um, to how you portrayed yourself publicly and that seriousness that you don't have all the time, but I wonder if it's happening something in, in your life as you were getting older that made you mature quicker than than we normally mature. Anything in your life? Yeah, to stop my to stop my career as a as a professional player, become a professional player was one um, big topic. Uh, I have to do a big decision: uh, what will be the next steps uh, to study something or uh, to study economics uh, was the, the decision. And also, um, the death of my father um, was a very very um, a big topic in my life. I have to do. Uh, different decisions for my family, for my mother, for my um, for my sister, for my brother, it was not that easy this period. But it helped me to develop my my character, my personality, because I was a very young guy. And um, how, how old were you? Twenty. It was nearly the same time I stopped my career, and um, uh, the the other thing was nearly at the same time. I don't know. Uh, I have to think about it. Six months later. So it, um, it was a, a hard period in my life uh, because I was uh, a young adult guy, but uh, still young. And uh, there were many, very, many, very important decisions for my, for my future. Uh, what will be next steps um, depending the job? What will be the next steps depending uh, our family? Uh, what we will do with our house? Uh, could we buy a new one for my mother? Um, Will she stay um, in the, the house of, of my parents, or will, will she go into a new house, a new new city? So it was not that easy, but um, it formed my personality and my my character. And yeah, I think now um, these two very important um, but hard things were uh, these two things very hard but very important for my for my career. And um, yeah, it would be better if my dad is still alive, but. Yeah. It's like that. Oh, he will be watching against Liverpool on Tuesday. Don't you I worry. hope so. Uh, uh, we will be also watching to see what uh, jacket you wear. But more importantly, <laughs> what, uh, what what do you think of the game? What do you think the keys will be of that of that encounter? Uh, the first, I think, the first important topic is that it's, the Champions League is a totally different competition, like the Premier League, because in the Premier League, uh, Liverpool get kind of struggled the last month. And it's not uh, that clear like uh, the last season. It's, they have a lot of injury uh, players, especially in central defending positions so um, there are some games they lose this year they never would lose last last year but uh, the Champions League is another competition so I think um, they will try to press us very high there will be moments when they attack us very high because uh, that's the idea of Jurgen Klopp to press the opponents and uh, then our build-up game has to be quick um, and we have to make the, the make the right the right decisions in our build-up game uh, that's very important we also have to play um, some long balls into the deep space so um, that we will not lose that many the balls when they will press us very high and uh, there will be also moments when we win the ball in high pressing but there will be parts of the game when we have to defend deep as well we we will not press uh, very high 90 minutes because uh, the ball possession of Liverpool also developed in the last two or three years uh, to, to world class so there will be a uh, big phase and a big period of time uh, after 90 minutes um, when we have to defend deep, have to do uh, ball winning moments in the deep pos position, uh, and then try to do and uh, to make our own counter attacks. And then we know that um, the most important topic of Liverpool is counter pressing. And then we, knew we need to have solutions in deep space, we need to have solutions to change the side to avoid their counter pressing. Um, and then we have to perhaps we have to cope with. Uh, different situations, Pref perhaps we have to code, cope with uh, conceding a goal because uh, especially three guys, um, the three forwards are, are very good and they're very dangerous for our own goal and yeah, we have to cope with these um, situations, we have to sacrifice a little bit and at the end um, our performance uh, should be very very good uh, to be um, the lucky ones and to win the game. Do you dedicate much time to, to study the rival? I mean in percentages, uh, is it 50% of, of, of the work that you put into the week or or is it mostly about your own team? No, it's a uh, it's very important part of being a manager to analyze the opponents and to, to try and figure out uh, the most important informations uh, and, and then tell them to, to your team. I think that's very important, but I'm not, uh, I'm not on my own. I have um, uh, three guys who analyze the opponent as well and I watch, most of the time I watch four, four or five games, only the First, uh, first 30 minutes, and then uh, the first 30 minutes of the second half, 
and try to analyze uh, it on my own because I want to draw a kind of a picture in my brain when I go into do a meeting with the analyzing team. So uh, I, I still have a uh, good imagine of the opponent's ideas and um, then I try, we try to figure out the most important topics and the most important information for, uh, for our teammates. We create a plan and then uh, we train it uh, on the pitch and then uh, we try to do it in a good performance um, in the game. Also, if I was playing against you, what I'll do is that for the first 30 minutes we play badly and then in minute 31 start playing how we want to play because you're not watching that bit. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, does it? <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Um, I hope we will well, play very good uh, over all the 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be better. <laughs> that would certainly be better. Um, I don't know if you... Has, has, has it been written any book about you yet or not? No, no. There's there's no book about me, but perhaps in the future, but I'm, I'm, st I'm still too young to, to write a book about my life and my, about my career. I have to win, uh, I have to win a kind of titles to, that somebody could uh, write a book about my career. Yeah, now, it would, to, now it would not be that interesting. Uh, it would be a very small book. Only, only, uh, don't know, 10 sides, Sagen Seiten, Seiten, nee, pages, genau, 10 pages, so. Listen, it's been a real pleasure, uh, Julian, to get to know you a bit more and, uh, and to spend time with you, so good luck You're on, welcome. on Tuesday. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Cheers, thank you. So soon.